should, should always and every Sunday be one per family. If you have more than one per family, please raise it up because we need some additional ones. There we go. Okay. Um, um, um. Who was talking to me? Where's Conrad? Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. We don't run as many coastlines as we do bulletins. Because those are in color, and color prints are a lot more expensive than others. OK, great. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, we have two minutes. Two minute warning. Go ahead. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to God's house. We gather in the name of our Lord <clears throat> in the life of the church. This is the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. And we pray that God would richly bless us as we gather uh, this day in his name. We welcome any guests with us. We are uh, so glad and we rejoice that you are here to worship our Lord with us today. And if you are visiting us, we invite you, uh, if you haven't done so already, to take a Connect card that you'll find in your pew rack and uh, complete as much information as you want to give. And you can uh, place those, those in the offering plate uh, later on in the service. Our theme today uh, is, is taken from today's Old Testament reading. Uh, during the season of Epiphany uh, this year, we are uh, considering the Old Testament readings uh, for each Sunday. Uh, two weeks ago, we considered God's servant Samuel. Last week, we considered God's servant Jonah. And today, we consider uh, God's servant Moses and what uh, God spoke uh, through his servant and his prophet Moses. And so we'll focus our, uh, our message today on Deuteronomy chapter 18 around the theme and the title, I've never been this way before. Perhaps you have thought that be before. Uh, in addition to uh, the worship folder that you received, hopefully you also received uh, the prayer booklet, the blue prayer booklet that contains the prayer requests that we received up until Thursday. And again, we encourage you not only to take this with you, but also to help us keep it updated. If there's uh, names that can be uh, uh, removed uh, from the prayer list, uh, especially uh, please let us know so that uh, the print size uh, uh, is getting smaller and smaller. So uh, there's a lot of requests out there. But if you if you if there's if if you notice that you put somebody on and that uh, the need for that uh, particular prayer has is no longer there, uh, please let the church office know. Okay. Also, uh, you'll want to be sure to take a look at coastlines. Hopefully, everybody has access to a copy uh, now, which contains uh, uh, the. Uh, uh, life of uh, events in the life of our congregation both now and in the future and uh, we'll have a note to say about that at the conclusion of the service uh, today 
So may the Lord richly bless our uh, time together uh, this day in his name. Uh, let us uh, join in, as you're able to stand and sing our opening hymn, Selected uh, Stanzas uh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. And free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. From Psalm 32. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but, the steadfast, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Therefore, let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they shall not reach him. Shouts of deliverance. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Many are the sorrows of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds the one who trusts in the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany is from Deuteronomy chapter 18. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from among your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God or see this great fire any more lest I die. And the Lord said to me, they are right in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly from Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Praise the Lord. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders first to be He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, and given them their testimony. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be before the faithfulness and uprights. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no God but one. For although there may be many so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God the Father from whom are all things and for whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge. But some, through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their existence being weak is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you have knowledge you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged, if his conscience is weak, to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed, the brother whom Christ has died. Thus, sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat 
lest I make my brother stumble. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to sing. gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed so that they question among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, we continue uh, with hymn 739.
I have absolutely no clue where we are. That was a line spoken in the Michael vehicle just a few weeks ago. It occurred when we were driving to the home of a, a member one night as the week following Christmas. So you're probably wondering just where were we? Well, I know where we were. We were driving down Colbert Lane here in Palm Coast. Many of you probably know what I'm talking about. Now, you see, we live on the west side of Palm Coast, just a, uh, just a hop, skip, and a jump here from church. So we don't have a ton of occasions to uh, drive down Colbert Lane over towards the east. Well, one day I had driven down that road by myself, familiarized myself with that uh, nice little uh, relaxing drive, M much easier than taking I-95, uh, if you ask me. But on this night, it was the first time Sue had been down that road. And the fact that we were driving at night simply compounded Sue's unfamiliarity of where we were going. By the way, I had permission to share this, okay? <laughs> I am not, a, she, she said, I'm not in trouble, okay? For, 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 okay. So, so Sue said, um, I really, I don't, I have no idea where we are. And as the loving husband, how did I respond? Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. I know exactly where we are. I don't need any directions. I don't even need GPS. Can be famous last words, but no, on this night, I knew exactly where we were. Relax. Giants are not going to jump out of the trees and eat us for a late night snack. I know where we are, and we will be just fine. In the book of Deuteronomy, God's people, Israel, they were also on the verge of a new journey, on the verge of going down a road that they had never traveled before. Now, the nation had traveled from, from Egypt, uh, then a, a through the Red Sea, then to Mount Sinai, and from Sinai to a place called Ezion Geber, and then from there to Kadesh. And after many years in and around Kadesh, Israel traveled north around Edom, through the plains of Moab, and now on the east bank of the Jordan River, gazing into west into the Promised Land. The people knew that in all their travels on this journey, they had never been this way before. The path looked miles and miles and miles long. Maybe they thought giants were waiting to jump out of nowhere and eat them for late night snacks. <laughs> Don't laugh. After all, this Book of Numbers, chapter 13. By the way, on the back side of your bulletin are, are scripture readings that I'm referring to today, uh, if you want to follow along. In Numbers, chapter 13, uh, they had said, the land through which we have gone to spy out, it is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are of great height. <clears throat> To compound that, there had been no Passover celebration for 40 years. Getting through the Jordan River presented a huge problem. And Jericho, with all of its walls, was looming in the immediate future. Israel was heading down a long, dark street. And they had never been this way before. Perhaps you've been in that passenger seat and not knowing where you are going. Perhaps you've even been in the driver's seat not knowing where you are going. But not just in your car, but in life itself. You know that same sinking feeling in life, and so do I. 
For example, maybe you're terrified about a decision your child has made or is making, and you're afraid of the fallout it will create. Will create. Maybe you're facing a situation at work that has your stomach tied up in knots. Maybe it's a financial setback or a spouse whose aging parents are succumbing to dementia. Some may be facing a future that is so painful and so private that it is really only known to God. Whatever our street in life may look like, Perhaps we mutter under our breath, or have muttered under our breath, I've never been this way before. Now when this happens, guess who comes lurking? The devil. He wants to tempt us. The thing about the temptations that he throws our way is that we're tempted to seek direction in ways that end up going nowhere. Some that even end up bringing, sadly, death. This is how Israel was being tempted. In the verses leading up to today's Old Testament reading, the Lord warns the people about this temptation. The Lord says, When you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominable practices of those nations. Whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. You, though, shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations do not follow the Lord's lead. But as for you, the Lord your God has not allowed you to do this. We t again, we are tempted, as were the Old Testament people, by Satan. In fact, he lies to us, which is what he loves to do. He whispers in our ears, be very afraid, doubt every turn, take no chances, say no to courage, say yes to caution, expect the worst, triple lock all your doors, Protect yourself in a tight radius of won'ts, don'ts, can'ts, and quits. Think about every possible peril and more that could happen. Focus on the dangers. Worry yourself endlessly with what ifs. And come weal and come woe, make your status quo. How do you like that? I'm not a poet, but that's it. Yeah. Come weal, come woe, make your status quo. I got that from a pastor who knows a lot more than, is more creative than I am. Anyway, the devil and the world offer only lies. And so who is really going to lead us into the future? In the opening verses of our Old Testament reading, Moses promises that the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me. Now, you see, because of sin that he had committed, Moses was under divine judgment and therefore unable to lead Israel into the promised land. And so he tells about another prophet, just like him, who, whom God was going to raise up. The Lord knows and the Lord knew that long, dark streets are not conquered by promising things like Oh, you'll be okay. No, this mystical, abstract, vague assurance does no good. Just ask a four-year-old who's scared of the dark, the dark hallways. No, a scared four-year-old needs a person, a real live person with a loving voice that is authoritative. Joshua was the first of these prophets who was like Moses, who spoke the Lord's words, and Joshua safely led Israel into to inherit the promised land. And there were other prophets like Moses, 
And they included Samuel, Elijah, and Elisha. These prophets also were the Lord's voice leading God's people in their journey of faith. Now, unlike the other positions and offices given by the Lord, such as uh, the judges and the kings and the priests, the prophets, their word was the final authority. The prophetic word of the Lord endured forever. It alone was powerful and able to lead God's people. So the Lord says in Isaiah chapter 55, So shall my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. And the final fulfillment of the Lord's promise of a prophet like Moses is fulfilled in Jesus, the greatest prophet. Because Jesus not only speaks the truth, he is the truth. He not only speaks God's word, he is the word, the word made flesh. Jesus not only knew the Father face to face, but he is the very face of the Father. Moses longed to see the, the Lord's glory, while Jesus is the glory of the Father. Moses led Israel to the brink of the promised land, while Jesus completely finishes what he began. Now, some who heard Jesus did everything they could to silence him. When their evil scheming and treacherous ways had failed, they finally employed Judas and Pilate. And they used whips and thorns and spears and nails. And they thought, there, we got him. He will never speak again. But three days later, the prophet would rise mightily with authority to say, peace be with you. Receive the Holy Spirit. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Unlike Joshua and Samuel two weeks ago and Jonah last week and all the other prophets, Jesus carried out all of the Father's promises. When he rose from the dead, he put the yes and the amen behind everything that the Father had said. Alive on the third day, Jesus now lives to lead us by his word. There are many roads that we in the Christian church have never been down before. There are many roads that we, as a congregation here at Shepherd of the Coast, there are many roads that we have never been down before. And you know, when we Lutherans encounter something new, what do we say? We've never done it that way before. We've never been down that road before. But my friends, just because we haven't been down a certain road before doesn't mean that the Lord isn't leading us down that road. In fact, throughout the history of the Christian church, throughout the centuries, our God has been famous Famous for leading his people down roads that they have never been before. Just ask Moses, Samuel, Jonah, and many others. Now, while we can't say with certainty what our future road as a congregation is going to look like, this we can say with certainty. The giants of sin and selfishness, of doubt and disbelief, of fear and fatigue, those giants are slain by the word of God. Unclean spirits even submit to his teaching, as we heard in the gospel reading. The enemy called Satan and the devil must bow to his word. Jesus leads his people by the gospel proclaimed, by the baptismal deliverance that we remember every Sunday, and the body and blood of the feast of our Lord that we celebrate each Sunday. With confident hope, we await our final journey into the promised land. 
the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. And so our prayer at the close of today's service will be this. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's destruction. Land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs and praises, songs and praises, I will raise forevermore, I will raise forevermore. Just as the Lord provided Moses and many other prophets to lead his people, so the Lord provides his final prophet, Jesus, to empower us to march forward in faith. Because of his cleansing blood, his resurrection joy, and the power of Pentecost, many Christians on the east bank of their Jordan rivers in life have dared to march straight ahead. St. Paul tells us why. Thanks be to God, who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession, triumphant even through death itself. My friends, whatever your dark street may be in your life, listen to the Lord your God. He says, go. But he guarantees that you will never, ever go it alone. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen. Listen, we must, and by God's grace, follow, we will. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that pass all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. As God's people who follow uh, his voice and his leading, we now come before him in prayer as he has invited us to do. Today in our prayers, we lift up uh, all those who are listed on the blue insert. Uh, we've also been asked uh, to pray for the following people. Uh, we pray for the Steve Koziak family, uh, Ray Yenshko's uncle who passed uh, away on the 25th of January. Uh, we pray for the family of Chuck. This was requested by Shelley Bennett. Uh, Chuck passed away in an accident. Uh, Peter, uh, we pray for Peter, requested by Shelley Bennett, who was injured in an accident and is in critical condition. And we praise God for the uh, birth of uh, baby Ella Rose, great-granddaughter to Dick and Lois Rose, uh, recently born. We also pray for the family of Rachel Rios. Uh, Rachel's father, Roman, uh, died yesterday. And also, uh, this, uh, this is included in the blue sheet, uh, the uh, family of Mary Beth Chapman, uh, who uh, joined her Savior on uh, Thursday. And so uh, uh, arrangements are still pending. We're going to hopefully uh, have those uh, put together uh, by Monday, and we'll announce them uh, when they are uh, firmed up. So now we pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, your servant Moses promised that you would raise up a prophet like him from among your people, putting your words into his mouth. We bless your name that you fulfilled that promise when you sent your son with the words of eternal life for us to hear and treasure. Lord, make all of your workers of your church faithful in preaching and teaching and sharing that word, and grant all of your people grace to hear and welcome that word with joy. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Lord God, your Son spoke with power and showed his authority to release from the oppression of the devil those whom the enemy had afflicted. Through our Savior's mighty word, continue to free those who are in bondage to the powers of darkness. Bring them into the kingdom of your Son, that with us they may marvel at your gracious love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, into your merciful keeping, we commend all those entrusted with civil authority among us. Help them to serve our nation and communities with honor. Remember also all who serve in the armed forces, particularly our chaplains, 
who minister to them in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you invite everyone who is godly to offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Hear the cries of your children who call to you in their time of need, those who are ill, those who are hospitalized, who are facing surgery or are recovering, those who are injured, those who are grieving the death of loved ones, those who are lonely or frightened. And we include in our prayers all those whom we've named, together with those that we remember silently in our hearts. Lord, have mercy on them all and let them take comfort in your steadfast love that surrounds those who trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are the creator of all that exists, and we thank you for the birth of Ella Rose. As you have added her to the human family, so also unite her to your church through the waters of baptism. And by the gracious working of your spirit, help her to grow in the nurture of the Lord, that she may bring glory to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, blessed is the one whose transgression you forgive and whose sin you cover. Grant that all who approach the altar today to eat and drink your son's true body and blood may taste the goodness of your forgiveness and bring forth the fruits of faith in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Trust in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our worship now continues as we gather our tithes and offerings and grateful thanks to our Lord to support the ongoing mission and ministry of his church in sharing the life-giving word of the Lord. And as we do so, uh, we listen to the musical offering that's given by our handbell choir.
We now continue as we prepare our hearts to receive the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus. As we do so, I, I invite you as you are able to stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world. You have made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Christen. Let us pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated at this time. Jim Sargis, our congregational president, has a word of invitation for you. As he's coming to the, uh, uh, to the microphone, I uh, direct your attention to the, uh, let's see, where did I put it? The Coastlines front page center column. Oh, thank you, sir. We're a good team. Uh, he's always looking after me. Uh, center, uh, top of center column uh, has the uh, summary of the uh, work that uh, we did over the vision planning weekend back in December that our church council and board of elders did. And uh, particularly, uh, Jim's going to speak to uh, what we're doing regarding that one-year emphasis at the very bottom there. I'll leave it to you, Jim. Thank you. 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 There we go. All right, good. <laughs> In December, as Pastor mentioned, a number of us went through the uh, revitalization program uh, that was led by Dan Lepley, who's with LCEF. After that meeting, uh, we got a comprehensive report back from him. And then what happened, we were blessed to have Bishop Hardy contact us and want to come and talk to us. So Dan Lepley from LCEF and Bishop Hardy came here this last Wednesday and we, 11 of us, met with him and both of them. We talked over certain concerns that we have and what they have. As you know, we're governed by a church council right now, but there's other ways to be governed. What's happened is that many of us have been in these positions for a number of years. This is my fourth term. I'm going to be 80 years old in September. I'm getting old and a little tired. We cannot fill some of the positions that we have open right now. So we're going to be looking at different ways to govern this council or the church. And what we're asking for, I'm asking for anywhere from three to five volunteers who would be willing to go through our bylaws and go through the governance, the different governance, that was better, right? Yeah. 
governance <laughs> procedures that can be followed. Then we could bring it back to the congregation, see if that would work for us. That's the one thing. So that's what I'm asking for. And it will not be council members. We want congregation to look at this and give us guidance. The other thing is, uh, within the past week and a half, we received a check for $175,000 from our donor to be used against our principal for our mortgage. We will be getting the same amount next January. For those of you who don't know, our mortgage is $1.9 million, and we're going to try and pay that down. The other thing is that in uh, 2012 and 2013, some of you weren't here, we had a capital fundraising project, and in that time frame, we raised $187,000. And we, we have an opportunity to get help putting a program like that together again from LCEF. I would ask, hello, yes, I'll take you. <laughs> Elijah, you're one of us. Yes. So I'm asking for people who could volunteer to be on that program. It's a, it's a long range program and we can give you guidance and help. So anybody who would like to be involved in this, you can contact myself, pastor, and we'll, get, we'll accept you, give you help, get you on the right direction. So that's what we're asking for people to do. Please consider helping our church. We can't, it can't be the same people all the time. We need fresh thoughts, younger people. And if you have any questions, I'll be out back. Please stop. I'll give you the best help I can get. Okay? Thank you. And you're not getting old, by the way. You're not getting old. <laughs> Let us uh, stand. I invite you to stand as uh, we go forth uh, in faith uh, with the prayer, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.